Hi, ladies. It looks like we're live. I'm going to make sure that this is live in the group like it should be. So let me just check that a moment, and then we're going to dive right in. This is episode 14 of Free Business Coaching. Okay, let me just make sure this is live. And looks like we are live. Excellent. So I'm Kim Trathan. I am your hostess inside of this group, the Ambitious Female Entrepreneurs Society. And this, I believe, is episode 14. I should have jotted that down, of free business coaching. Today we are talking, we're closing in on the end of the year here pretty quickly. We're talking about how to evaluate the year that you just had in business, 2021, and then how to use that evaluation to set yourself up for a more profitable 2022. So you might want a pencil and paper for this, or the replay will live inside the group and on my website. Um, inside the group, you just click on guides at the top of the Facebook group, and you can see all of the free business coaching sessions. Um, otherwise, you can always go to kimtrathen.com backslash free business coaching, and you can access them there. If you're new here, welcome. I'm excited to have you. I'm Kim Trathen, and I help women grow businesses that they love. And... I've really been doing a lot of thought about what that, a lot of thought work around what that actually means. And to me, growing a business that you absolutely love does not just mean that it's making you money. And it doesn't just mean that you're doing something you enjoy because you can be broke and doing something you enjoy and you can be making a shit ton of money and not loving what you're doing or working around the clock. What it actually means to me to grow a business that you love means that you're having fun and it's profitable. And you can have as much fun as you want, build white space into your calendar, and make as much money as you want, right? That's what it really means to grow a business that you love. If you are looking for help with this, um, if you want to shorten that time frame on how long it takes you to grow this business that you love, reach out, DM me, go to my website. You are all smart humans inside of this group and watching these videos. Um, KimTheBusinessCoach.com is my website. And I am accepting clients. I'm talking to women right now and enrolling clients for January. Because I'm taking two weeks off at Christmas this year. It's going to be amazing. I hope you're taking time off then too. So let's connect now if you want to talk about coaching in January. If you have some questions, you're curious what it could look like, um, not quite sure what, like, what stage your business is at and what you could accomplish, let's set up a free call. Okay, we can talk it all out. All right, so let's dive in and get started with evaluating 2021 and then using that evaluation to propel your business forward in 2022. You may or may not have seen, I had it in the description of this, but there are four big reasons why you may not have been evaluating your business thus far. Maybe you didn't know that you should. I hear that one a lot from women. Hi, Rhonda. So happy you can hop on the live. Uh, maybe you didn't know you should be evaluating your business. Maybe you're like, oh no, Kim Trathen, I have it all right here in my head. It's never a good plan, ladies. Things get forgotten so easily. Uh, maybe you didn't think you had anything to evaluate yet because maybe you're just starting your business or maybe you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you're making a lot of money and you thought evaluations were only for people that weren't making money yet. Faults, 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 and faults. Okay. So we're going to break it down today. I'm going to give you, this is one of the simplest ways. I believe it's the simplest way. I've been doing this for years now. I believe it's the simplest way to evaluate your business, but it does take a little bit of legwork in the beginning. So you may not be ready to like actually do this right now in real time with me because you're going to have to pull some numbers. You're going to have to pull some things and figure out what the hell did you even spend your time on this year? What were you actually doing in 2021 in your business? So the fastest way, and to give you a heads up, the reason this so directly ties into your growth for 2022 is when you're making your plans for next year, we want to take what you did this year Figure out what worked really well for you and what didn't, and then use that to tweak your plan for next year. So let's dive in. I broke this down into three steps when you are evaluating your 2021. Okay, so when you're evaluating this year, the first step is we want to know how you spent your time. I would often just grab like my current journal or notebook, grab a sheet of paper. You can literally, I don't love the word audit. It just brings me back to my corporate days in the retirement plan industry, but you can audit your calendar. Just open up if you use Google Calendar or you have a hard copy, literally flip through. What are the things that you spent your time on during the year? And just start making a massive list. Every sales call that you had, every live training that you did, 
See, I wrote a list here. Every client you worked with, every consult you had, every place you showed up for your audiences, meaning were you on Facebook? Do you have a group? Do you have a business page? Do you have Instagram? Were you on Clubhouse? Maybe you tried Clubhouse and it didn't last very long, right? Are you on TikTok? Do you use Instagram Reels? Do you use Stories? Just list out for yourself where are all the places that you showed up for your audience in your business. Every mentor that you hired or coach that you hired, uh, maybe every VA that you took on, independent contractors, if you hired employees, what's every hire that you made this year? Um, every person that you met for coffee, every trip that you took. Okay, we are auditing your full calendar, but I want to mention the trips now because we're gonna have a little separate part here. So list all the business activities and also list everything that you did for fun. And it's really important. Maybe you went to the gym every week. Maybe you didn't go to the gym every week and you were like, I thought 2021 was going to be the year that I did that, right? Maybe you had aspirations, but it didn't quite happen. But list what you actually did. So you have your business column and then you have your for fun column, okay? What are the things that you did? This might take you a half hour, right? It'll probably depend too on how organized you were with documenting. Okay, and listen, ladies. If you are not using any calendar, that's a whole nother conversation and you need to start using a calendar in your business, okay? That's a separate conversation and could be a whole separate training. Um, but depending on how detailed and how documented you were with things, I would think about a half hour flipping month to month, either in your book or on your Gmail calendar, write down all the big things. You can get more detailed with this, right? I would at least include the like larger trainings that you did, but you can also write down like, how many social media posts did I do? How many emails did I send, right? You want to audit all of these activities that you did inside your business and everything you did for fun. And if you have nothing that you did for fun this year, that's a problem, okay? And that's gonna be like job number one for next year is implement instilling, prioritizing. That's the word my brain is seeking for. If you have nothing in your fun column from this year, that is your number one priority for next year because I know it can be so easy, especially if you um, have a propensity to like overwork because you love what you do or because you're scared that it won't do as well as you want it to without you working all the time, right? There's different motivators there. Sometimes the best thing that you can do for yourself is build in your fun ahead of time. At one point this year, I realized like, gosh, I like never see my friends for dinner anymore. So I decided I'm going to meet people for dinner. <laughs> it was that easy. I just decided it's taking that type of action. And I sent out a couple of text messages and got some dinners on the calendar and time with my girlfriends. Okay. So sometimes it's just deciding and being really proactive about that. So again, if you have nothing in your fun column and you look back, you're like, wow, I haven't seen my friends in months. I haven't gone on a date with my husband. I haven't taken any trips. I didn't go to the gym or whatever. You maybe love hiking or kayaking and you never did it this year. That's a big sign for you. And that's going to be a big tweak that you make with your calendar in 2022. Because again, running a business that you love means you actually create this. It's like a whole being. Your life and your business can all be integrated into your whole self. And you need to be prioritizing time to do the things that you enjoy. Super important. Okay, so step number one to evaluating this year is to audit that calendar and get those lists. All the business activities and the fun activities. Next, step number two, is you're gonna categorize each one of these. Now the easy category is gonna be the fun one, but there might be some things in the business category that bleed into this one. So I'm gonna, I'm actually doing this out of order. But one of the categories are things that make you feel like you're living your best life. Okay, things that make you feel like you're living your best life. So all those things in that fun category, dinners with my friends, trips with the family, Gosh, we spent a week in the UP this summer and we kayaked and we swam and fished and all the outdoorsy things, right? That makes me feel like I'm living my best life, right? So you might have some business things in there too. Maybe you made a really big investment that you were super excited to make and it made you feel like, yes, like this is it. I am at a new level when I am able to make this type of investment. So even something in the business category might fall into this things that make you feel like you're living your best life. That's a really important one. It's the easiest one for especially high-achieving women to overlook, okay? High-achieving women get so much satisfaction from hitting their next benchmark and their next goal that they tend to discount the value of having fun and living your best life. 
And that's why almost all of us created these businesses, right? So you're going to break all of these activities into three different categories. Things that make you feel like you're living your best life. Things that worked really well. And what I mean when I'm evaluating by things that worked really well, so when you're looking maybe at your business activities and maybe you did five different trainings, I would list those five trainings separately and then I would evaluate it. If it worked well, this means it was something that you loved doing and it grew your business. Meaning you can see the value that it contributed to making you money. Doesn't mean that you had to have signed a client from that one specific training, but can you see the value in it? Can you see that you had people attend? Maybe you had people comment, maybe people watch the replay, right? It doesn't mean you had to have signed a client from that one specific training where you got off and you're like, boom, consult booked, client signed, ready to roll, okay? But did you love giving it? Only you know that, right? Nobody else can do this for you. Or did you hate giving it? Maybe you did a webinar for the first time and hated it. Or maybe you did a live stream and decided, man, that's not my jam. Not loving it. Right? So be really honest with yourself. Every single item needs to get categorized. What worked well is things that you loved and grew your business. Second category, things that didn't go as well. Meaning you either didn't love doing it or it didn't grow your business. Hey, I want to make that distinct dis, distinguish. Ah, I want to make that difference really clear. I can't speak today. I want to make this really clear. Things that worked well, you loved it and it grew your business. Things that go in the what didn't go so well category are things that you either didn't love or it didn't grow your business. An example I've shared a couple of years ago now is when I first started my business, I was running a um, girls talk business is what it was called. It was an interview series that I ran on Facebook where I interviewed different female entrepreneurs. I loved it. I had so much fun. I met so many amazing women. It was, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It didn't directly grow my business and especially not for the amount of time that it took, right? I had to, I created a landing page. I had to create applications. I had to review all the applications. The way I was running it, when I got to the year end and I was doing my evaluation that year, I had to ask myself, what category does Girls Talk Business go into? Because I loved doing it and it did serve a purpose to grow my business, right? It got me more comfortable on live. It got me understanding how to interview people. It made some amazing connections. I ended up hiring one woman as my mentor. I had another woman hire me that I had interviewed. So it did grow my business, but for the amount of work and the amount of time that it was taking out of my calendar, I had a decision to make and I had to decide, oh, Rhonda said that's actually how I found you. That's so fun. And we've been connected for years now. I love it. I've had more than one woman hire me. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, right? But I had to decide in the moment which category I was going to put that into. And I knew with the amount of time that it took, I knew it wasn't growing my business, not proportionately. So I ended up putting that into category number two, okay? I gave these to you out of order with talking about living your best life, but the first thing that I categorize is things that worked really well, meaning you loved it and it grew your business. The second category, that I put things into is things you didn't love or didn't grow your business. I ended up putting Girls Talk Business into that category because I knew my options were either, I have to massively change how this is being run and treat it more like a podcast and hire a manager and like get these things streamlined or I needed to table that project for now. Okay, because the way it was working was not growing my business proportionately with the amount of time, effort and energy that I had to pour into it. And that was a tough decision for me to make because it was so enjoyable. I had met amazing women. Okay, so that's category number two. The third category that I put things into is things that make you feel like you're living your best life. We talked about this here in the beginning because I kind of gave them out of order. So remember when you audit your calendar, you have the whole business list and things that you really enjoyed, things you did for fun. I would expect all of those things that you put in the fun category are going to fall into the things that make me feel like I'm living my best life. Right? I started running again this summer. That made me feel like I was living my best life. And then I got an injury and I stopped running. So that would be something when I do my year end audit, 
that would be something I'm like, yes, running made me feel like I'm living my best life. And then I know for next year, I'm going to get that back in there. Right. It's really cold and snowy out now. It's like the worst weather to run in. Doesn't mean I can't run. That's just an excuse. Okay. So you're going to take all of these out of your calendar and you're going to take all of them and split them into three categories. So that's steps one and two, audit calendar, categorize. Okay, and then under step number two, we have the three categories. Step number three to evaluating this year, what did you learn from this? So you have these things broken into these different categories, right? Like that Girls Talk business show, I had to decide what category am I gonna put that into? What did I learn from that experience? Well, I learned a lot, so much goodness. But I also learned that I was, I was spending way more time on it than what I was getting back in immediate growth from my business, right? So what, what did you learn or what will you tweak? Okay, what would you do differently now that you have this list and you can see, wow, these things over here really grew my business. These things over here really didn't. Okay, networking can be one of those things that some people love networking, some people don't love networking. There is no shame and no judgment, no matter how you feel about it. I know entrepreneurs that build their businesses on networking and meeting people for coffee. Okay, I audited that. I evaluated it at the end of the year. I committed to doing it one year and thought, maybe I just don't enjoy it because I haven't really done it. And then at the end of the year, I said, okay, here's all the coffees I went on. There's, right, things are opened back up by us now, but this was also pre-COVID. Um, but there was travel time to get there. There was the back and forth to set it up. I didn't always understand and know what the person's intention was behind reaching out to me and asking me to connect with them and meet them for coffee. Then there was the actual time for the coffee. Then there was usually something sent afterward. You can build amazing connections and relationships through networking. For me, it went into the category two of things that I either didn't love or didn't grow my business. I didn't love the amount of time that I poured into that. I viewed it like this really slow burn. And I just didn't love meeting strangers for coffee. And it was super time consuming when you're like driving around town and finding parking and getting there. It just wasn't other people love it, right? But be really honest with yourself. Because if you fill your schedule with things that you don't love doing in your business, you're going to have a really difficult time growing a business that you love. And if you fill your time, right, so many women are notorious for this of whether they're making money or not, but they're working around the clock. And some are so busy, they're working more than full-time hours with a part-time client load. Or they might be making a ton of money, but if you have no time to enjoy, if you can't take a breath, and enjoy the work that you've done, enjoy the business that you've built, show up for your clients or your customers is your, your best possible self, meaning refreshed, with a bright brain, clear thinking, well rested. That's when you show up as your best self, right? So if you're filling your calendar with things that aren't growing your business, you're not growing your business as fast as you could be. If you're filling things that aren't making you money, you're not growing your business as fast as you could be. Rhonda said, ugh, this is for me. I am assuming, because I know that you are a profitable entrepreneur, I am assuming you mean filling all this time. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. So many women fall into it, and there can be a couple different driving factors behind it, right? On one hand, it can feel really good, especially, especially, listen up, Rhonda, this might be you, I don't know, but especially when achieving things makes us feel valued versus like, oh, I have all this white space in my calendar. I can do what I want. It gets real uncomfortable real fast when you actually start building white space into your calendar. Ask me how I know. Ask me. Yeah. Makes my skin start to crawl. Right? So that's where our work is. Because nobody, I know, Rhonda, I know you. You did not build your business to be like, yes, I'm going to do this so I can work all the time. I know you did it. I remember our conversations, right? So this is where, and when you feel that discomfort, ladies, whether it's around building more white space into your calendar, whether it's um, doing something new in your business, when you feel that discomfort, I always take that as a sign of like, oh yeah, this is where my work is. 
right? Especially with like building the white space in. It's like, yes, this is where I need to focus now because this is going to be the work that actually builds the business that you had dreamed about before you went down this road and started working all the time. But it's almost like, it's almost like a drug addict, right? And like you quit cold turkey and they get real like itchy and scratchy and it can be like that. So we want to spend a lot of time really taking care of your brain, managing, managing your brain around it because it can be incredibly uncomfortable. Rhonda said, definitely need to build in the white space. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so powerful and it is such the biggest boss move you can ever do, but it's some of the most uncomfortable work to do. It, it really, it really, really can be. Okay, so when you have these lists, you have these things categorized, I want you to ask yourself, what can I shift, change, or tweak? After learning, like actually really learning, right? Like I put this thing over here and this is working really well. And maybe you don't need to touch the things that are working really well, the things that you love and are making you money. However, we can always ask ourselves, right? Like, should it be outsourced? Outsource, let me think, I always had a, I had a, like a line that I used for this. Outsource, eliminate, delegate, or keep. Always can ask yourself, am I gonna outsource this, eliminate it, delegate it, or keep, right? Outsource might be like, hey, I'm just gonna pay somebody to do my social media. I'm just gonna hire an agency, they're gonna handle it, right? Delegate might be like, oh, I'm gonna have my VA do this for me. Eliminate might be like, hey, I'm actually just removing that from the calendar. It is no longer a top priority for my time in my business. That's what I did with Girls Talk Business. I eliminated it, right? I just ended it. It doesn't have to be a huge, big, drawn out decision either, okay? Or you keep it. I love doing this. It grows my business. This is one of my priorities that I spend my time on, right? Outsource, eliminate, delegate, or keep. So ask yourself what you will do differently with each one of these things. Use those four prompts, outsource, eliminate, delegate, or keep. And then just write it next to every single one because this is now creating your roadmap for 2022. If you're going to eliminate something, eliminate it now. Cut it off. Be done with it. It no longer has to suck up your time, effort, or energy. Okay, so this is a, the perfect segue time now to talk about setting yourself up for success in 2022. So you're going to dive in and do all this work and you're going to have a really, really clear understanding of what made you money and what didn't make you money and what grew your business and didn't why maybe you were stressed or overworked, right? And what you can do differently. Now you're gonna take a look at 2022. Anything that you have eliminate, put a date next to it. Maybe it's something like when I eliminated Girls Talk Business, it was just cut and dry, like, oh, I'm just done doing this now, take it off the website. The people that sent me applications, they should have all gotten an email from me saying I'm indefinitely pausing the show. All right, I'll retain your application on file if I bring the show back in the future or something like that. All right, but I just, boom, done. Okay, maybe it's something that you need like a, a month, right? Maybe you have to give somebody notice, you're ending a contract with them, whatever it is, but put a date next to every single thing that you're eliminating so that you have a hard deadline of when you're making this change for yourself and in your business. So then you're going to prioritize. Brian, I don't know if you're still on. Perk your ears up if you are. Now you're going to first prioritize the things that make you feel like you're living your best life. So if that's going to the gym once a week, if that's having an hour every morning, if that's moving meetings to the afternoon, if that's um, having at least lunch with your husband once a week, if that is having a date night once a month or once a week, if that is maybe only seeing clients from 10 to 2, and you have white space in the morning, white space in the afternoon. Some of it will stay white space and some of it will get filled with responsibilities. But your number one job, you're going to eliminate the things that you're eliminating. And then you're going to build into your calendar next year the things that make you feel like you're living your best life. If that means you want to travel every three months, then maybe you write in your calendar right now when you need to choose where you're going and when travel plans need to be made. Whether you're doing it or you're hiring somebody to do it or you're asking your VA to do it but you build in those things now. If it's going to the gym, if it's running, and you haven't been doing that after you got injured, it's probably going to look like me mapping out what running schedule I'm going to be implementing again, 
right? If it's going to the gym, choose the date time, buy the gym membership if you don't already have it, but build out the things that make you feel like you're living your best life first, top priority, okay? After that then, now you're gonna look at the rest of the business activities and you're going to prioritize them, right? If you're gonna outsource or delegate, right to who? Maybe you need to hire somebody for it. Maybe you already have somebody on your team or somebody that you know or somebody that you just need to get onboarded, right? Map that out and then put that in your calendar. When are you having these conversations? When are you reaching out to them? How long will onboarding take? When will the project be fully outsourced or delegated over to these other people? Okay, because as soon as you can get that done, those things are now off your calendar, right? You don't even have to map them out beyond that into 2022. And then finally, you have the, the business activities that you want to keep. And when you audit those, I encourage you to really look and then map out your week. You have, you have your best life things taken care of. You have the wrap up things taken care of that you're gonna outsource or delegate, right? You have the dates in there that you're gonna eliminate certain activities or whatever you need to do to prepare to eliminate those. And now look at the remaining things that you have left. Maybe you loved doing trainings. Maybe you hated webinars. You're not gonna do those anymore, but you loved doing live trainings. Great. Now it's time to map out your trainings for 2022 and you plug them in your calendar now knowing that you already have your best life things mapped in there and you already have time allocated to outsource or delegate those other things, right? Maybe you loved meeting people for coffee. You're like, you know what? I love it. I've made such valuable connections. I wanna do one coffee date a month. And maybe you say, you know what? It's gonna be the last Friday of the month. It's gonna be the date that I go and meet somebody for coffee and you just write it in your calendar now. This is how you take control over your calendar and you don't let your business activities take control over you where you become a slave to your calendar and you end up working around the clock all the time, stressed out, overworked, maybe making good money, maybe underpaid, right? I, I don't even know who said this, but right, like the, the age old, nobody ever says like, I, you know, I should have made more money on my tombstone, right? Like there's always more money to be made. The beauty is making more money and gifting yourself more time. Make sense? I hope this makes sense. Um, I think then you will have, oh, one of the activities that you should always consider when you're planning ahead for the next year, right? And this, this should have been done when you looked at what do you wanna outsource, delegate, eliminate, or keep? Keep in mind that outsourcing and delegating might mean you do have to hire somebody new. I'm not sure now if I said that a little bit ago. So you might have on your 2022 to-do list to hire somebody. Great, get it carved into your calendar now. Do you already know how you'll onboard them? Do you need to create training videos for that or a training process? Do you have a contract ready? Do you know who you're gonna interview for it? Carve it out now. Maybe it doesn't even mean it has to be like, oh, this all has to be January 3. Maybe it's gonna be like, okay, February is when I'm gonna get together the onboarding materials and I'm gonna hire in March or whatever, right? Whatever your timing looks like, but just know that you might have some back-end business things that you need to change structurally to really start setting you up next year for the growth that you want, whether that means you need to be set up to handle more clients and more customers or set up to gift yourself more white space or both. That is it, ladies. We are right on time. I am so proud of myself when we end on time. If you're just hopping on, make sure to go back and catch the whole training so that you can really see how to evaluate your 2021 and then set yourself up for even more growth in 2022 using that evaluation. This is the type of work that I do with my clients. This is how my clients create businesses that they absolutely love, where they get more fun and more money and more white space in their days. Thank you, Rhonda. I'm so glad that you could be on. So if you are curious about coaching, I am talking to women about coaching for January spots. If you're interested or curious about it, just probably the, listen, you're all smart humans. I'm sure you know how to get a hold of me, but you can always go out to kimthebusinesscoach.com. There's a big bright button you can't miss that says consult um, or free call. Just click that. There's an application for you to fill out so that I can learn all about what's going on in your business right now and be really, really prepared for when we sit down and talk about coaching together. So there's a few questions for you to answer, or you can always shoot me a DM. Uh, Rhonda, you are so sweet. I love you, lady. All right, everybody, have a fabulous rest of your day, and I hope you have found episode 14 of Free Business Coaching to be super valuable. Bye, ladies.